Hello and welcome. Today we are going to look at how to conduct a cost benefit analysis. As you are all aware, in that uh, in the planning phase, we normally have what is referred to as a feasibility study. And in the feasibility study, there are a number of um, what types of feasibilities that we undertake to determine whether a system needs to be implemented or not. One of it is what we refer to as a technical feasibility. The other one is what we refer to as a schedule feasibility. We have another one we refer to as an operational feasibility. And the last one is what we refer to as economic feasibility. Or in other words, it's also referred to as a cost benefit analysis, which is what I would want us to look at at this juncture. Cost benefit analysis or economic feasibility tries to answer the question, should we build it? Should we go ahead and build a given system? It also tries to answer a question, is it worthy to build this particular system? In an attempt to answer that particular question, the system analyst looks into costs versus the benefits. When the costs outweigh the benefits, that means that the project isn't worth to be proceeded further. And so how do we tell whether the costs outweigh the benefits or whether the benefits outweigh the costs? We can only be in a position to understand this by conducting what we refer to as a cost-benefit analysis. To enable you to understand this concept better, we are going to illustrate this particular process using an example of an inventory system. But before we get to that, it's important for us to understand the steps that one undertakes before we begin the calculations of a cost-benefit analysis. When you are conducting a cost-benefit analysis, you need to follow the following four steps. Step one, you need to identify the costs, you need to identify the benefits. Costs are normally divided into two. We have what we refer to as development costs. These are the costs that are undertaken during the building of the system and we also refer to them as one-off costs. They happen when the system is being built. We have another type of cost which we refer to as operational cost. Operational costs are the costs that are incurred when a system is being used. This could be things like uh, maintenance costs, this could be salaries for the support staff, then we also have benefits, and the benefits are also divided into two. We have what we refer to as tangible benefits, and we have what we refer to as intangible benefits. Tangible benefits are those benefits that have a monetary, we can attach a monetary value into them. For example, increase in sales, that you can attach a, a monetary value to it. Intangible benefits are those benefits that we cannot directly attach a monetary value to it. For example, improved customer satisfaction. We may not, quanti we may not quantify the improved customer satisfaction in monetary terms, but we can use certain proxy measures to be in a position to assign a value to it. And that takes us to the second step. Once you have identified your costs, once you have identified your benefits, the second step is to assign values to those particular costs. For the direct costs, or maybe what we refer to as development costs, for example, the cost of the hardware, you may attach now a value, maybe the cost that you incurred in buying that PC, or the cost that you incurred in paying your developers. You also go ahead and assign values to the benefits. For example, if it's uh, increased sales 
and maybe you are you presume that the sales are actually going to increase with a certain magnitude over the next four, four or five years. Maybe the sales will increase by 10%. So you, you are portion that. After that, you determine the cash flow. What, mean, what do we mean when we say you determine the cash flow? Remember, during the development stage, you incurred an investment, you incurred a cost. But the benefits are going to come as you use the system over a period of time. And so we shall be in a position of determining the out, the cash out, and the cash in. So that we are able to see at what point do we move from a cost to a point where we now begin getting some benefit. After that, then we need to begin assessing, which is step four, the project's economic value. And these are the metrics that we normally undertake to enable us to decide whether it's worth it to proceed with the project or not. And one of the metrics that we normally use is what we thought was return on investment. Return on investment, we want to assess the, the gain that you have gotten from the investment you have undertaken on that particular project. And we are going to see how it's calculated as a percentage. The higher the return on investment, the more worth the project. The next metric is what we thought was the break-even point, which assesses the time period that is taken for us to move from uh, a cost to a benefit, for us to, to move from uh, incurring a cost to actually now getting some benefit or getting some income. The shorter the period, the better it is. Then we have the last one which we refer to as the net present value. And this tries to put into consideration a number of things. That the value of money today is not the same value of it in some future time. And so when you're trying to assess the project economic value, it is put into consideration that money loses value over time. And so we always have to look at the present value of the income we are talking about or the cost that we are talking about that we are going to be incurring in five, ten years. We'll give an example. The bread nowadays that is costing 50 shillings was costing around 20 shillings some 15 years ago. It therefore means that uh, the value what 20 shillings would have enabled you to buy 15 years ago is not the same thing the 20 shillings can enable you to buy today. Meaning, therefore, that money loses value over time. And therefore, when we are computing, it's imperative for us to check what's the present value of those future benefits we are talking about, of those future costs that we are talking about. To put all these into proper perspective, we are going to use an example of an inventory system and I'm going to walk you through the identification of the costs, identification of the benefits, assigning values, assigning costs. We are going to determine the cash flow and we're also going to compute the return on investment. We are going to compute break-even point and we are going to compute the present value and the net present value. Usiende mbali kapa moja nami.